We're going to switch into a more serious topic this morning, and that is grief and loss. Now, last month, we talked about finding the right words to say when someone passes away. It's definitely one of the hardest things to do. This morning, joining me is professional counselor Elisa Bishop Becker. She has some advice for us on what we should say and what we shouldn't say when a loved one has someone pass away. Elisa, thank you so much for being back with me this morning. Thanks for having mm -hmm. me back. All right, Elisa, now, last month when you were on, I remember that one of the things you really focused on was that when a loved one, a friend or family, has someone pass away, what we really need to do is be there to listen for the person. I think so often we'll just try and talk, 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 and, and say something that's going to fix the situation. Exactly. But they don't need that. No, and, and you can't fix it for them. I mean, we all we care if we care and we, we love the person we want to help. And, and, and one of the ways we think of helping is by being comforting, trying to say things that, that will take the pain away. But we can't take the person's pain away, um, it, it's especially in the beginning. What we can do, again, is listen, um, be patient. Uh, the grieving person wants to tell the story about how the death happened over and over and over again because that grounds them that's that's that they're trying to come to terms with a reality that is so different from what it was that it seems so strange and and bizarre to them that they have to keep repeating it over and over again so sometimes we have to be very patient and listen to them tell that story over and over again but, and, and not think, yeah, 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 I've heard this already. Mm -hmm. um, because it's part of their healing process. Mm -hmm. And so when they start telling the story again, you know, you can just, just nod your head, just be there, Give, put your hand in theirs or if they are comfortable with that. Um, Another thing that's really important is they may start to talk about experiences that they've had, feelings that they've had, th that they've never had before, because this is very common when your world has been, especially a traumatic loss, when, when your world has been shattered, torn apart, your experience is different. You may be seeing things, hearing things, um, paying attention to things that you never have before. Things are different. And people often report sp having spiritual experiences um, that are very meaningful for them, that can be very meaningful for them, like um, dreams of their, their loved one, their deceased loved one, sometimes even seeing them. Uh, often in a crowd, people will report, you know, oh, I thought I saw that. or. They'll see things like butterflies, and they'll they'll think that's the spirit mm -hmm. of my of my loved one. Or they'll interpret things, or they'll see a dime, mm -hmm. and they'll see it as a gift. It's very important to let them talk about those things, but not just to let them talk about those things, but to validate their experience, which doesn't mean necessarily agree with it if you think that those kinds of things are not possible. But just say, tell me more. Mm -hmm. Something as simple as that, show that you're interested in what they're going through. Mm -hmm. Because they're not feeling, they're feeling sort of like things are very unfamiliar and unstable, and they mm -hmm. need that grounding. They need to talk about their experiences. They need to trust their experiences, mm -hmm. because if they're going to heal, then they need to, they need to believe that what they're experiencing is real, mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and you can help them do that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that they have a lot of confusion at the moment. So you're right. They just need someone to, yeah. to be able to be there and say, okay, I, I understand what you're saying and, 
And like you said, tell me more. Tell me more. Just just something as simple as that can can sound to the grieving person like, oh, you know, I'm sort of feeling like my world is crazy and upside down. This person is is by by saying tell me more is saying to me, I don't think you're crazy. Mm -hmm. This is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep talking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, keep expressing it, and. Um, um, so that can be a big part of the healing process, that kind of, of validation. And if you care about someone, you're going to have to maybe, you know, they're out there in the, in, in the, in the middle of the stream, you're going to have to wait a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, put a toe in there with them just to show them, not, not to say, yeah, you know, a lot of people think that validation means agreement and say, oh, yeah, you're right. This is not about being right. This is about caring and, and acknowledging to the person that, yes, I understand. This is your experience. Elisa, another thing that you talked about last time was that we shouldn't say to our grieving friend or family, call me if you need anything. And I want to talk with you about that again because that's a mistake that I've made. I've told people that, you know, I love or care about, please call me if you need anything. But you're and saying... And they haven't, have yeah, they? No, no, yeah. they haven't called. And you're saying, don't say that. What is the alternative then? Okay. Um, first of all, you can say it. Everybody says it. I've said it. Um, there's nothing wrong with saying it. The person knows that you're saying it because you care and you really do want to help. The only problem is they're not going to call you, as this has been your experience and my experience. Um, they're just not going to do it. So what you need to do is take the initiative yourself. So think, what does this person need? Do they have young children do that need to be babysat for or taken to school? Are they um, just totally don't have enough energy to do things like clean their house or, um, or cook meals? Um, you know, is the, is the grass in their yard, if they have one, starting to look like <laughs> a jungle, <laughs> a jungle, or uh, um, you know, it, it, a lot of these things are visible. Mm -hmm. um, do they have a car that needs an oil change, or mm -hmm. uh, or needs to be filled up with gas, or a scooter, or whatever? So, uh, if, of course, it's a lot easier if you live near the person. Um, so think of those, what you can do, and then just do it or ask the person if you can do it mm -hmm. for them. Um, or you, if you're not near the person, it's, it's more difficult. So they're not going to call you just to talk, mm -hmm. but you can call them and say, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. That's really usually all you would have to say. And, and the and the person will take it from there. Right. So. Um, yeah. Another, okay, one more really important thing is to keep the anniversaries in mind. Mm -hmm. Keep the date, put the date on your calendar that the person died. So then, you know, then, then the next year you can maybe send a note or a phone call saying, I'm thinking of you because those dates are always really hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it sounds like always follow up after the death as well that because it's you know that they'll have a lot of people supporting them right after it happens but they need the support a couple months and Elisa you Very talk important. about all of this also in your book yes. the grief and loss spiral so if anybody wants to pick up a copy they can do that loss on Amazon. and growth the grief spiral <laughs> they can do that on Amazon thank you so much for being back on this morning and Thanks talking about me. this tough subject it definitely is and there's so much more to talk about <laughs> all right well you'll be back on next month okay great <laughs> i'm going to take a quick break right now i'll be right back after these messages stay with me